The ion magnesium benefits just about everything in the human body. Stick with me through this video because at the end you'll understand just how common magnesium deficiency is in the population of the United States and around the world. You'll also have an understanding of the chemical properties of the magnesium ion that make it such a strong player in our body's health. And lastly, I will give you the one laboratory test that you cannot miss that's going to give you the best understanding of your magnesium stores. So let me ask you a question. If there was a single cell phone app that you could download onto your phone that would instantly make 300 to 400 parts of your life easier, would you download it? I mean, of course you would. I would as well. Magnesium is kind of the same way. So let me give you a couple of facts about magnesium. The first fact is that magnesium is involved in some 300 to 400 different enzymatic reactions in the body. The other interesting fact is that it is estimated that a full 50% of individuals over 50 are magnesium deficient in the United States. And this extends around the world as well. My name is Scott Resnick. I'm a physician and with my YouTube channel, you can learn to take control of your health and get the life that you want. In these videos, I give you the tools, the tips, and the techniques to really turn your health around. So today we're diving into one of my favorite ions, magnesium. What I wanna do is start with a few clinical studies. So to begin with, I want you to turn your attention to a study published in the esteemed journal, Nutrients, in 2018. In this study, the author writes that, routinely measured serum magnesium levels do not always reflect total body magnesium status. Normal blood magnesium levels eclipse widespread magnesium deficiency. And this is echoed in another study as well, published in Medical Hypotheses in 2001. And in this study, the author states, and this is what I find is most important about magnesium. It is highly regrettable that the deficiency of such an inexpensive, low toxicity nutrient results in diseases that cause incalculable suffering and expense throughout the world. And then they go on to list a laundry list of all the different clinical conditions that are associated with magnesium deficiency. And I can tell you that this is a partial list because at the bottom they say, etc. So magnesium is important for so many components of our cellular health. It makes up a large component of our tissue mass um, and, and is highly concentrated in tissues like bone. It's involved in energy production and the production of ATP. It's involved in synthesis of DNA and RNA. And I believe most importantly, it's involved in maintaining what's known as the electrochemical gradient across cell membranes. So don't be frightened by that long word because you're going to understand exactly why, what I mean and why magnesium is so important to the way that our nervous system works. In fact, magnesium deficiency has been associated with any number of clinical conditions that involve the nervous system, such as muscle spasms, headaches, arrhythmias, anxiety, nervousness, or seizures. Why is this? To see why magnesium is so important for all these conditions that involve the nervous system, we need to go look at a cellular membrane. So a cell membrane separates the inner and the outer parts of the cell, pretty basic. But there's an electrochemical charge across this membrane. So in the same way that if you took a nine volt battery and touched it to your tongue, you would feel an electrical shock. If you could shrink down your fingers to microscopic size and put one finger on the outside of the cell and the other on the inside of the cell, you would similarly feel a shock, albeit very, very, very small. This is maintained by sodium, potassium, and magnesium. And to understand how all this works, I wanna take us to the periodic table of the elements. Now, I know many of us have PTSD from our high school chemistry, but this will be pretty painless. So if you look at the farthest left column on the periodic table, you see sodium and potassium. And this column is characterized by ions that want to have a plus one positive charge. In the next column to the right, this is characterized by ions that have a tendency to lose two electrons. They're just a little sloppy with their electron care, and they wind up with a positive two charge, such as magnesium and calcium. 
If we go back to the cell membrane, we see that there is a enzyme called the sodium potassium exchange mechanism that pumps potassium from outside the cell to the inside of the cell and pumps sodium uh, ions from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. But what it does is it does it in a one-to-one -one ratio. So by the time you've pumped a positive charge to either side of the cell, the cell is still electrically neutral. What happens is over time that the potassium tends to run down its concentration gradient and escape out of the cell and that leaves the cell with an electrical differential across its membrane. So recall that magnesium has a plus two charge. What this does is it helps to to stabilize these cellular charges across membranes. When we're in a magnesium deficient state, it's almost as if our nerves aren't working quite as well and they're just a little more skittish. Now, I mentioned earlier that frequently magnesium may not be measured correctly. The common thing that's done in most medical practice is to measure what's called a serum magnesium. But any number of studies are showing that this is a not a good way to assess somebody's magnesium levels in their body. A better study is to, to obtain what's known as a red blood cell magnesium. Now, what's interesting is that I mentioned that 50% of people over the age of 50 are magnesium deficient, but a recent study that came out of Brazil showed that somewhere between 17 and 30% of supposedly healthy college students were actually magnesium deficient, and these, these students didn't even make it into the normal magnesium range. To really understand your body's magnesium status, the best thing you can do is check what's known as a red blood cell magnesium level. Now, if you go to your doctor's office and ask for a red blood cell magnesium done, there's a better than average chance that they're not gonna do it, and you're gonna wind up with a serum magnesium, which is not a good approximation of your body's magnesium stores. So be sure to ask for red blood cell magnesium by name. And if they don't want to check it, look into the description of this video below and I'll give you some links where you can actually order and obtain red blood cell magnesium on your own. Once again, my name is Scott Resnick and I'm making these videos to give you good tools to stay well and to get healthy. Of course, if you like these videos, uh, be sure to comment, uh, click like, subscribe, or leave a suggestion for future videos. In addition, if you go to my webpage at scottresnickmd.com, which really focuses on fatigue, I have a free ebook that I'd recommend that you read. It's not too long. I think it's a nice uh, um, opportunity to look at some different ways of thinking about your health, and it's totally free. Once again, I'm Scott Resnick. Thanks for checking in on this video, and I will see you in an upcoming video.